Today, we're getting under the hood of women's health with Dr. Chris Creatura, a unique amalgam, menopause expert, NAM certified, sex educator, and reproductive freedom advocate. Owner and founder of Chris Creatura, MD, PC, gynecology, menopause, and sexual medicine. She is a clinical associate professor of obstetrics and gynecology at Wall Cornell Medical College and the only full-time New York City-based gynecologic fellow in female sexual medicine certified by the International Society for the Study of Women's Sexual Health. Dr. Creatura will get under the hood of menopause. I like learning about menopause because it's neglected. It's it's one of the things that doesn't happen to men, right? So like abortion, like pregnancy, right? It It's neglected because it doesn't it concern men. So I think of menopause as an exciting time because you're finally liberated from the tyranny of reproduction. But a lot of people see it as a big negative because you're no longer capable of reproducing. It's, it's one of the three major neuroendocrine transitions of life, but it's the only one that doesn't evoke wonder. Puberty is one thing, right? Most people don't look forward to puberty, but it is a fascinating time in life. Pregnancy, everybody's very excited about pregnancy, loves to talk about it. But menopause gets sort of shoved under the rug, like you shouldn't even talk about it because it's too humiliating to think that women no longer have the ability to produce human beings. Menopause is not finite, right? So women women don't just feel better when they're finished with menopause, right? So the symptoms are progressive and they worsen with time. So the vasomotor symptoms may disappear, but the other symptoms, the deterioration of the genitourinary system, the bone mass, the muscle mass, the neurocognitive symptoms, those things get worse with age. The cardiovascular system also ages and hormone therapy can actually arrest that aging process. Can't stop it from happening, but it can, it can actually cause a deceleration of that, of that decline, right? So anyone that says that menopause is over and you don't have to deal with it anymore if you're not getting hot flashes, it doesn't understand the process. It's as ridiculous as asserting that pregnancy is finite and that once the baby's delivered, that there's no long lasting impact on a person's health. Because gender bias and public disinformation regulate care for women in ways we wouldn't tolerate in any other part of medicine, right? This relates not just to menopause, but reproductive care, pregnancy, abortion, sexual medicine, even cardiac and neurologic conditions that disproportionately affect women are not studied. A lot of women go to see their providers for, for symptoms that could easily be treated with hormone therapy, and they're seeing multiple subspecialists. They go to a rheumatologist, a neurologist, a cardiovascular doctor, and they're all giving her five different things, and no one says, oh, when was your last period, or what are your periods like? Because they never ask about it, and they could just give her estrogen and make her happier. That's why it's hard. And most of these physicians don't even know where to look for a menopause practitioner. Now, hormone therapy is not just estrogens either. Androgens are important and they're woefully understudied. And I, I think it's because we don't like to mess with cultural ideas of what's male and female, right? We also don't like the idea that if we acknowledge that androgens actually control desire and regulate sexual behavior, that if we give them to women at a time when they're not actually going to even produce children anymore, we might actually encourage them to have bodily autonomy and to have sexual agency. That's really scary, right? Say, unfortunately, a lot of gynecologists are not ready to treat their menopausal patients. And I'm, I'm shameful to admit that because I want to elevate my colleagues. I have amazing colleagues who do, and I have amazing colleagues who do abortion care. And then I have amazing colleagues who don't do abortion care, right? And there are all kinds of reasons for that. And some of them are decent reasons. And some of them are because providers are traumatized and threatened. But I will say that for most people, the reason that they probably aren't providing good menopause care is not because they're mean doctors or they don't care. Most of it is about time. And the second part is about education. But honestly, it takes time to give really good quality care to people and to talk about their symptoms and to address their needs. And the kind of visits that insurance companies in this country actually support 
are not going to allow for a nuanced conversation about general health care. And general physicians in this country are paid to put things into people and take things out of people, but not to have nuanced conversations about preventive health. I just think there's a general discomfort with female agency. So if if a woman is aging and she still has a desire to be vital and sexual and active and engaged, I think that that's threatening to some people. And I, you know, I don't want to sound like it's threatening to everyone, but I still think there's a huge cultural bias against actually just listening to women's symptoms and taking them seriously. I think that women present with heart disease differently than men do. And it's very common that physicians will learn how to detect symptoms of a heart attack in a man, but they're actually not that skilled at listening to when a woman has those symptoms and they get told women get told, you're just anxious, right? And then they have their first heart attack and people wonder why do they have higher cardiovascular mortality, right? It's because we're not really listening. So we need to have different norms and different standards for taking care of people who actually have different bodies. I think there's a huge change. If I I attended um, the American College of OBGYN meeting in Washington last year, it was the first time I attended in quite a while, almost 10 years. And the beauty of the meeting was that there was a huge gender flip, right? The first time I ever attended was when I started my practice back in 1992, or I started in 91. So I went in 92 and I remember standing up in the, um, in the uh, lecture hall and asking a question about sexual health and hysterectomies of a mantle, right? Like four men who were discussing surgery and its effect on women's sexual health. And I tried to ask, a rather flippant question about how they would feel like if I sort of like flipped everything and made it happen to men. And they were so dismissive and so defensive that they actually refused to answer the question. And now I go to the meeting and instead of having the meeting be about 80% men and 20% women, 30 years later, it's about 90% women and 10% men. And we get to have conversations about equity and discrimination and abortion conversations and advocacy and menopause. It's a different world. You know, we're all not that different, right? Like when we talk about genitals, I always say the genitals are the same, right? We're just, we, we're just organized differently, but they respond to the same hormones. They need blood, they need oxygen, right? They need androgens, they need estrogen. But we have to understand that the impact of all of these things is slightly different depending upon the genetic makeup, depending upon the person's other comorbidities. We've got to really personalize medicine and medicine has always been personalized to men. And then there's them in that little corner for reproduction. And that's, that's what we're doing now that so many women providers have entered all fields, not just gynecology. I mean, fortunately, there's more women in my field than any other, which makes sense. But I would say all fields of medicine have expanded the percentage of women and it's changed everything. It changes the way breast surgeons make incisions. It changes the way um, endocrinologists have conversations with patients. It changes the way rheumatologists discuss pregnancy with their patients. Well, we all have to collaborate and work in a transdisciplinary manner so that we can really, really have enough medical education to take good care of our patients and to fulfill their needs. that you're not alone and that there are treatments and that if you are not getting a responsive care from your provider, that you can get educated and seek better care. There are professionals that can help you and you shouldn't be silenced. I would say that hormones don't have gender, right? They are universal. They're in all human bodies and they're not inherently dangerous and usually they're beneficial. That would be my major menopause message. And then I would also like to add that we have an enormous need for gender specific medicine and research. And that we, and we have a need for our legislators to actually listen to science and respond to expert opinion to create health policy that actually ensures access to quality care. I wanna connect menopause and its, its neglect to the general neglect of women's health, right? And this is why I keep bringing it back to reproductive care and maternal mortality, maternal morbidity, the, the devaluation of the reproductive labor that women provide and the complete medical apartheid that we've created in this country. So I think that because of 
the almost universal gender bias that exists in the culture that event medical events that occur only to women are always undervalued, right? Underfunded, understudied, and is sometimes siloed in such a way that we create very serious harm for women. But now I've got a younger generation of students and physicians who want to have these conversations. And we've got female heads of our departments who are hiring people with the understanding that having people from different workplace backgrounds, different life backgrounds, enhances the quality of medical care that we give. I want to be hopeful about that future because it's a future I didn't, well, it's a future I'm, um, I'm hoping to enjoy and 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 benefit from, but certainly it wasn't the way that things were when I was being trained 